Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us for today's overview. Uh, we'll be discussing key points and points of consideration as you prepare your abstract for the 2020 edition of Black Librarians in America. And this edition is really a theme on reflections, resistance, and reawakening. My name is Dr. Anna Ndumu, and I'm one of the four editors on the volume. And joining me today is Dr. Chandra Walker, who will introduce herself. Hello, my name is Chandra Walker, and I am one of the co-editors of the Black Librarians in America, um, Reflections, Resistance, and Reawakening, and I'm delighted to be with you today to answer some questions and share information about this upcoming volume. Thank you, Chandra. And in the next slide, we will discuss uh, the purpose and mission of the volume. Uh, this book is really inspired uh, by two important milestones. Of course, 2020 marks the uh, year of BCALA's founding, the 50th anniversary to be exact. And it is also the anniversary of the 50th, um, the, sorry, the original, I should say, publication of Black Librarians in America, which was, of course, published by Dr. E.J. Josie, which my colleague will discuss a bit further um, in the next slide. But we wanted to document the important role that Black librarians play in U.S. society and the achievements of African American and or Black librarians in the work of addressing ongoing social inequity. So we welcome publications that really center, one, the Black experience, and two, milestones and contributions to the field writ large. We'd like for authors to think about how uh, we are in a seismic and watershed period in our nation's story. So this is really a reflective uh, monograph. And some of the topics we're interested in are this historic election of the first woman of color and an HBCU graduate as the VP. Um, and that should be a great motivation for us in our writing of our chapters or the chapter abstracts. We should also think about persistent social and racial inequities, which we have seen in light of COVID-19 and the racist murders of Ahmaud Arbery, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and so many others. And lastly, we'd like to contribute to the ongoing discourse and dialogue on ways of increasing anti-racism, empowerment, and representation in the LIS field and beyond. So those are some of the uh, goals and missions of this title, uh, Black Librarians in America, the 2020 edition. And in the next slide, Shonda will talk about previous edition. Thank you, Anna. So this, um, using this method, uh, collecting various perspectives from Black librarians is actually a very historic, um, something that's gone on historically in our profession. As Anna mentioned, the first book in this series, The Black Librarian in America, Issues and Challenges, was, per was published the year that BCLA was founded in 1970. And just scanning the table of contents for that volume reveals some of the major players in librarianship that were involved. People like Virginia Lacey Jones, Robert Wedgworth, Casper Lee Ward Jordan, Augusta Baker, A.P. Marshall, Jesse Carney Smith, Herman Totten, and Ann Allen Shockley. So just some really major players in the field of librarianship as well as black librarianship. Uh, two years later, the next volume was What Black Lib Librarians Have to Say. That was co-edited um, by E.J. Josie with, um, with Ann Allen Shockley. That was followed up by Black Librarians in America Revisited, which was sort of a retrospective looking back um, at that first volume that came out in um, 1970. That was followed by the Handbook for Black Librarianship, the second edition, which was published in 2001, 2000, excuse me. The most recent volume in this series was the 21st Century Black Librarian, which was published in 2012 and was edited by uh, Julius C. Jefferson Jr., Akila Nosaker, and former uh, BCLA President Andrew um, Jackson. Additionally, um, Scarecrow, Roman, and Littlefield have published some other volumes of interest um, related to Black librarianship. 
and those include E.J. Josie, Transformational Leader of the Modern Library by Dr. Renata Chancellor, and the African American Struggle for Library Equality by Dr. Aisha Jones, which is, and both of those were published um, in, within the last year. So we're really capitalizing on the history of publications about Black librarianship, as well as continuing some of these more recent volumes that have been published by this press. So this book will be divided into three sec four sections. Uh, the first section is a rich heritage honoring Black library history, sort of looking back at the long history, um, advocacy, activism of Black librarians over time. The second section is celebrating collective as well as individual identity. Um, that section endeavors to really look at intersectionality um, and within Black librarianship. Uh, the third section, Black librarians across settings, will look at the various spaces where Black librarians find themselves working, whether it's academic, public, special, medical, what have you. Um, that is a section to really discuss um, working in various settings where librarians find themselves employed. And then the fourth and final section is moving forward, activism, anti-racism, and allyship. It's very uh, forward-facing and Future, um, future oriented, really discussing um, where we need to go at this pivotal moment in our history. So the submission guidelines, we're asking for a 1000 word abstract to be sent to Black Librarians Book at bcala.org. The deadline is December 1st at 1159 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Abstracts should include the following information the target audience, um, type of information workers, school, public, academic, archivist, museum, curators, LIS educators, LIS students, the target section, those sections um, that I mentioned previously on the previous slide, the chapter rationale, so the purpose, scope, guiding questions and implications, chapter organization, outline section headers or signposting, and then 100 word background statements from the author bios. All of the information um, about the proposals is available on our BCLA website at bcala.org slash call dash four dash abstracts. You can find all of these details and then again please be reminded of the deadline of December 1st 2020 at 1159 Eastern Standard Time. And now I'll be addressing just a few frequently asked questions. The first question is whether chapter authors will be able to retain uh, copyright and the answer is yes. Uh, there is a contract to be signed with the publisher Rowan and Littlefield and that is for you to be able to retain the rights to your individual chapter should you be invited to um, submit a full uh, chapter. The second question is on the chapter word limit. These chapters, given the very short time frame, uh, which the entire monograph has to be submitted to the publisher by May 1st, and chapter authors will be permitted uh, two revisions. One, a very short revision after the initial submission acceptance, and authors will be notified by mid-December whether their uh, proposal, abstract proposal, has been accepted. We will uh, present many different pieces of uh, ways to expand, ways to edit, ways to operationalize or rethink some, some uh, uh, I guess, content within the chapter abstracts. So in other words, there'll be a lot of feedback from the editors. That'll be the first touch. And then after that, those submissions are due by February 13th. And again, we will uh, provide copious feedback and those submissions are due um, the month after. And so that is the general timeline. Um, and given that chapters are therefore very concise um, in comparison to traditional chapters, which are usually 6,000 to 8,000 words. In this case, uh, we are hoping to accept 3,000 word maximum chapters. So when you think about the 1,000 word abstract submission, that gets an author well ahead or 
well on the way toward the uh, final book submission. So that's about a third of the entire chapter. And we uh, carefully and purposely structured the call that way, given the short time frame. The idea is for this book to be available shortly after NCAL, which is the National Conference of African American Librarians, um, in hopefully the summer of 2021, shortly thereafter. So it would be available as a commemorative item on pre-order for those to, uh, for conference attendees and supporters and BCLA members to be able to contribute um, to the caucus by purchasing this book. And the citation style is APA 7th edition. And also there have been questions about whether the book is peer reviewed. And again, given the time frame and the short turnaround relative, then we are, as, we are hoping to just provide editorial reviews and not peer reviews. A few other things to consider as you craft your book abstract are number one, we welcome and even um, encourage collaborations. And uh, if you are proposing a single author chapter, if there are others who have also proposed similar or um, promising topics or ideas, we may ask authors to consider co-authoring or collaborating. Um, so collaborations are very much a part of the spirit of the book. Uh, the second aspect that we would like to tease out um, involves critiques. And we definitely want to celebrate Black librarianship, but we also would like to expand Black librarianship. And with that, we welcome critiques. So any chapter ideas on ways of probing, rethinking, or challenging what we know about Black librarianship are especially welcome. So as you continue to work on your chapter abstract, please keep those two things in mind, potential collaborations and areas of critiques of black librarianship. It's important to reflect and self-assess the field in order for the field to uh, continue to advance. So thank you so much for joining our overview today. Again, if you have any questions at all, please reach out to us at the email address provided in the call for chapter abstracts. We look forward to your submission. Have a great day.